a hazard and operability study is a structured and systematic examination of a planned or existing process or operation in order to identify and evaluate problems that may represent risks to personal or equipment, or prevent efficient operation. It is carried out by a suitably experienced multidisciplinary team during a set of meetings. The HAZOP technique is qualitative, and aims to stimulate the imagination of participants to identify potential hazards and operability problems. Structure and completeness are given by using guide word prompts. The relevant international standard calls for team members to display intuition and good judgment and for the meetings to be held in a climate of positive thinking and frank discussion. The HAZOP technique was initially developed to analyze chemical process systems and mining operation process but has later been extended to other types of systems and also to complex operations such as nuclear power plant operation and to use software to record the deviation and consequence. Method equals outline equals the method applies to processes for which design information is available for continuous processes this commonly includes a piping and instrumentation diagram and process flow diagram which is examined in sections chosen so that for each a meaningful design intent can be specified for example in a chemical plant a pipe may be intended to transport 2.3 kg per second of 96% sulfuric acid at 20 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 2 bar from a pump to a heat exchanger but a prudent designer will have allowed for foreseeable variations a euro hotter stronger acid, pump a euro no flow a euro unregistered trademark pressure on the line, before the design reaches detailed HAZOP and that wider design envelope should be explicitly identified and taken as the A Euro design intent a Euro unregistered trademark basis for HAZOP study. The intended duty of the heat exchanger may be to heat 2.3 kg per second of 96% sulfuric acid from 20 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius but its full design intent will also include a euro glimpse of the obvious a euro unregistered trademark functions. For example maintaining containment of hot acid. The size of sections should be appropriate to the complexity of the system and the magnitude of the hazards it might pose. The HAZOP team then determines what are the possible significant deviations from each intent, feasible causes and likely consequences. It can then be decided whether existing, design safeguards are sufficient, or whether additional actions are necessary to reduce risk to an acceptable level. For batch and other sequential operations a logic flow diagram should be available for HAZOP study as well. Equipment may have different design intents at different points in the operation and hazards may arise from performing operations out of sequence. When HAZOP meetings were recorded by hand they were generally scheduled for three to four hours per day. For a medium-sized chemical plant where the total number of items to be considered is 1200 about 40 such meetings would be needed. Various software programs are now available to assist in meetings equals guide words and parameters equals, in order to identify deviations, the team applies a set of guide words to each section of the process. To prompt discussion, or to ensure completeness, it may also be helpful to explicitly consider appropriate parameters which apply to the design intent. These are general words such as flow, temperature, pressure, composition. The current standard notes that guide words should be chosen which are appropriate to the study and neither too specific nor too general. A fairly standard set of guide words is as follows, the last four guide words are applied to batch or sequential operations. Where a guide word is meaningfully applicable to a parameter for example, no flow, more temperature, their combination should be recorded as a credible potential deviation. The distinction between some guide words may not always be remembered by the team or be well observed by the plant. HAZOP type studies may also be carried out by considering applicable guide words and identifying elements to which they are applicable or by considering the parameters associated with plant elements and systematically applying guide words to them. Although this last approach is not mentioned in the relevant standard, its examples of outputs include a study recorded in this way. The following table gives an overview of commonly used guide word, parameter pairs and common interpretations of them. Once the causes and effects of any potential hazards have been established, 
the system being studied can then be modified to improve its safety. The modified design should then be subject to another HAZOP, to ensure that no new problems have been added. Team AHAZOP study is a team effort. The team should be as small as possible consistent with their having relevant skills and experience a minimum team size of 4 to 5 is recommended. In a large process there will be many HAZOP meetings and the team may change as different specialists and possibly different members of the design team are brought in, but the study leader and recorder will usually be fixed. As many as 20 individuals may be involved but is recommended that no more than 7 to 8 are involved at any one time. Each team member should have a definite role as follows. In earlier publications it was suggested that the study leader could also be the recorder but separate roles are now generally recommended. Software is now available from several suppliers to aid the study leader and the recorder. History, the technique originated in the Heavy Organic Chemicals Division of ICI, which was then a major British and international chemical company. The history has been described by Trevor Klitz who was the company's safety advisor from 1968 to 1982, from which the following is abstracted. In 1963 a team of three people met for three days a week for four months to study the design of a new phenol plant. They started with a technique called critical examination which asked for alternatives, but changed this to look for deviations. The method was further refined within the company, under the name Operability Studies, and became the third stage of its hazard analysis procedure when the first detailed design was produced. In 1974 a one-week safety course including this procedure was offered by the Institution of Chemical Engineers at Teesside Polytechnic. Coming shortly after the Flixborough disaster, the course was fully booked, as were ones in the next few years. In the same year the first paper in the open literature was also published. In 1977 the Chemical Industries Association published a guide. Up to this time the term HAZOP had not been used in formal publications. The first to do this was Klitz in 1983, with what were essentially the course notes from the IHME courses. By this time, hazard and operability studies had become an expected part of chemical engineering degree courses in the UK. See also Cybersecurity HAZOP. Notes. References. Further reading, Klitz, Trevor. Hazop and Hazan. Taylor and Francis. ISBN 0852955065. Tyler, Brian, Crawley, Frank and Preston, Malcolm. HAZOP, Guide to Best Practice. Ichami, Rugby. ISBN 978-0-85295-525-3. Gold, J. Review of Hazard Identification Techniques, HSE, HTTP, www.uscgmilcg5 docs volume percent 203 slash volume percent 203 chapter percent 2010 PDF. Hazard and Operability Studies Explanation by a Software Supplier, HTTP, www.planningnswgovopfoshiphap8rev 2008 PDF, Witty, Steve. Food, Tony. Is HAZOP worth all the effort it takes? Retrieved March 5, 2015. Potential Problems with HAZOPs.